Good morning, church. Good morning. And ni hao to all those watching this online. As per usual, please give our video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, you can, the subscribe button should be on the screen somewhere down there. Um, you can also follow us on our website or on our Facebook page. The title of my sermon today is What About Free Will? I had previously talked about on the subject of will in my sermon on the Lord's Prayer. But today I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it, in particular with regards to baptism. But first of all, I would like to refer back to my sermon on the Lord's Prayer, uh, especially the part about God's will be done. So I want you all to keep that in the back of your mind, God's will be done. Once again, I'm going to beat my drum, this drum which I've been beating for a while. We live in a world where it's all about me, 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 my rights, my will. How does this gel with God's will be done? In short, it doesn't. <laughs> In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says that we must not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is all part and parcel of being a born-again Christian. Out with the old, in with the new, in mind, heart and soul. As born again Christians, we are to surrender our will to that of God's will. This does not mean that we have lost our free will. It means we use our free will to choose to submit to God's will and not our own. The last song I've decided to follow Jesus, throughout that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I choose to follow Jesus. Though none go with me, I still choose to follow Jesus. I may walk alone, but still I choose to follow Jesus. That's the free will. Yes, we still have free will, but at the same time, this is not a license for a get out of jail free card for us to continue sinning, namely, continue with our old ways, continue to conform to the ways of this world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23, I've spoken this before, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I have spoken this, so please refer to that sermon. <laughs> when we became Christians, we made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior out of our own free will. Nobody should have forced coerced or pressured you into making that choice. And I'll say this, most of those out in the YouTube land, if you have been forced, coerced into making that decision, then please go and speak to a person in Christian authority, wherever you are. And to anybody in our WC family, if you feel that you've been forced, and coerced, or even emotionally blackmailed, into making that decision, then please come speak to the church leadership. There might be an open wound or resentment that is keeping you back from growing or going further in your Christian walk. We are told to preach the good news about <coughs> Jesus Christ, not bash people over the head with it. No hellfire, brimstone and damnation preaching. We are imparting important information. It's up to the person listening to make a decision out of their own free will to either accept or reject what we're saying. When Jesus first sent out the 12 disciples, not the 72, the 12, out to spread the good news, one of the instructions to them was that if anyone does not welcome them or listen to their words, that they must shake the dust off their feet when they leave that home or town. That can be found in Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. 
This was a symbolic act practiced by the Pharisees whenever they left an unclean Gentile area. However, the disciples would be doing it in Hebrew as Jesus asked them to go and preach in Hebrew towns. So when it came to being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you should not be forced, coerced, pressured, or more accurately, emotionally blackmailed into being baptized. If you were baptized under those circumstances, then I will say most likely the Holy Spirit was not condoning you. I believe that once you have accepted Jesus Christ into your life, it is the Holy Spirit that prompts you to be baptized. It is something that comes from within, not from outside forces. Yes, as Christians, we should be encouraging our fellow Christians who are not baptized to be baptized. I said encouraged, not emotionally blackmailed. I know some people have been baptized before, and I'm putting those word baptized in air quotes on purpose. However, it's for the leaders of the church to establish whether those previous baptisms were blessed by the Holy Spirit or whether it was just a box ticking exercise in order to satisfy the people who were pressurizing them. That is why, before we baptize anybody, Pastor Phil will speak with the person they'll meet and will establish the reasons why they want to get baptized and also explain to them exactly the significance is of what they're about to do. We inform them so that person of their own free will can make an informed decision or choice. That means we won't necessarily agree to baptize any person if their motives and understanding of what it means to be baptized is not in line with the will and word of God. We are not here to complete religious tick boxes in order to placate the human will. We are here to honor and obey God, further the kingdom of God, and to build his church according to his will and word. If this does not align with what you are willing to accept or do, if this does not suit you, or the way you want things done, then perhaps the Living Water Church may not be the right Christian church for you. Unless you are willingly here for the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. So what about free will? It's still free. But use it with wisdom in accordance to God's will not the world humans. I hope you have heard what I have said and will take the time to consider ponder on the message information I was trying to get across. Thank you, Shashir. Now, this is for the family of Albert McSee. <coughs> I believe for the first time in Beatrice's Christian life she is truly free, free to express her love and faith in God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, free to stand here and sing in her praise and worship out loud and publicly, free to ask questions without fear of aggressive responses, free to say what is on her heart in accordance with the principles I mentioned above. Beatrice, out of her own free will, came to full and asked to be baptized. She was not forced or emotionally blackmailed into doing it. She's doing it willingly and with an open and obedient heart. Beatrice, the Holy Spirit is most definitely going to be all over this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs>